So imagine that you're going to an election and Zanon PF has already won this election before it has begun. This video is proudly sponsored by Premium Laptops. Do you need hardware upgrade, software installation, operating system install, workstation desktop maintenance and repairs, and many more? Please come to Premium Laptops. We are best in Harare, Zimbabwe. Our contact details are plus 263-782-5570-061. Plus 263-713-939-475. Premium laptops, great deal, great price. Tomorrow is going to be the election day. But I am so disappointed in Nelson Chamisa's tactics from the time when he was still in MDC Alliance and what has happened now. The reason why I'm disappointed is in 2020, after the Monzora debacle, the issue of the constitutionalism and all of that, when it started, I mentioned it that that was the time when Nelson Chamisa needed to disengage and start a new party and nobody paid any attention. What are you? You are just a blogger. You have nothing. You have no following. But I said this in 2020, in 2022, we saw Nelson Chamisa starting triple C. But we had said it in 2020. There was not so many recalls that were done then. And that actually gave Monzora a chance to do some amendments and there's some bills that have been passed that you know for yourself that they are not. And Tendabiti mentions this and says that we are in the same situation that we had in 2020. This is a legal man. And we also said it is high time Triple C disengages or they try to resolve this issue amicably with Chabang, or the other option would be to disown Chabang completely. File an affidavit that says that we don't know Sengezo Chabang, or file an interdict that stops Sengezo Chabang from participating or recalling members of the parliament. But he didn't do that. They tried to file other way, and it has been dismissed by the courts. They have lost these cases. My question is, why are the legal minds always making the mistakes that are not supposed to be made by a layman in the street? I'm a layman. I've never studied law. But I can tell and sense where people are violating the law or people are not doing the right things. Why is it that the struggle of the people, which is in the hands of the triple C, now, it has been derailed because of schoolboy errors, failing to listen. What was you say it? He's a journalist. Said that, let them go to the elections as independent candidates. That's another option. Or they call off the triple C immediately. There will be a massive by-elections. And that will force Zimbabwe into a constitutional crisis. But they didn't do that. They chose to pursue other means that, you know, politically masturbate their followers and say, they continue to say ZANPF is bad, ZANPF is bad. It won't help you to continue saying ZANPF is bad when you are continuously being a victim. That is my personal view. And I believe if Zimbabweans are very genuine about the opposition in Zimbabwe, they really need to look away from Triple C. They need to really look away from the tactics of Nelson Jamisa because all these people are being given hope and that hope is slowly being taken away. How many people have been told Sadak is coming? How many people have been told that help is on the way? How many people have been told? And now, people are being put in an emotional roller coaster. And I don't think for our generation it is fair for us to be kept ransom by one uh, set group of people who claim to be the savior of Zimbabwe. I'm not supporting ZANU-PF and I had never supported ZANU-PF because I'm supposed to be neutral. But personally, I feel that what I see in the streets, what I see people experiencing, what I see people talking about, it makes me sad because when people are thinking we have a party that is going to stand up for the people, that then brings me to another narrative that Triple C is not even, I mean, Nelson Chamisa is not even really fighting for Zimbabweans. 
he might have been bought as a pseudo opposition. And that brings us to that narrative. Why make these schoolboy errors? Why make these grave errors? Even the V11 saga in 2018, even the V11 saga in 2023, nothing is showing that these people are really serious about making sure that they become a vibrant movement. But people keep on guessing and being given hope. Some people get beaten up and get killed in the process and they come and condemn and they become like undertakers that are coming to console people with false message of hope. I am angry and I'm disappointed at Nelson Chavis, also angry and disappointed at our opposition in Zimbabwe. We have failed and they have failed to meet up the standards of a proper opposition in Zimbabwe. Don't blame ZANPF. Don't keep on blaming ZANPF. ZANPF is a party on its own. You are a part on your own. Just like what we see in football. Manchester City is a team of football. They play game. If they've got a bigger squad, Burnley should not complain that they are a small team that is coming. They compete. If Manchester City can have a deeper squad, this is it. So you can't complain if you're in the game. You get in the game, don't try to play small boy or say, I am not so ready. Be ready. If you know that ZANPF is, is that big, come and compete with them. Bring the game to them. And the way how you bring the game to them, you become organized. That's the same way we do in football. If you are playing Real Madrid, if you're playing Barcelona, you bring the game to Barcelona. You don't say because Barcelona is a big team, so we're not going to play football. Uh, we're, we are going to play victim. It doesn't work like that. In the world out there, even with big companies and small companies, they all compete the same. If you cannot go big, go home, that's the name of the game. You can't beat Zampier. Please step aside. Let somebody come in and let's try a new strategy. Not this strategy ambiguity that is actually bedeviling the lives of the people and keeping them guessing and investing their money in a movement that is not taking people anywhere. That is my message. And I'm not going to be apologetic. You can insult me all you want. You can call me Zanpf. I don't care. What I care about is the, the livelihood of the Zimbabweans who are putting their life on the risk who are putting their lives into the movement, who are putting their investment into the movement, who are putting their emotions into the movement. But all they get is a weak and disorganized opposition, a weak and an opposition that is not respecting the will of the people. I'll see you on the next video.